this is Chris Sev. Let's build a Tailwind CSS 3D button. So we'll be using absolutely positioned items to place a box behind our button so that we can get that border, that shadow looking effect. And you can do this on more than just buttons. You can actually do this on divs, on images, whatever you need to do. So to start us off, I'm going to go into settings and I am going to add Tailwind right here. And now that we have Tailwind, we don't need the CSS panel or the JavaScript panel. So here, let's go for min height is screen. Let's go for flex, item center, and justify center. And I'm using Emmet here. And also, let's give this a background of blue. Let's go for background blue at 600. Perfect. Now we need to add a button. So we're going to say button goes here. And let me actually increase the font size on this. There we go. So we're going to say button goes here. And we are going to say the background goes here. And we're going to say text goes here. So that's the three components of the button that we're about to make. And we're going to start us off with button right here. And go down here and we'll close out the button. And everything else will be inside of this button. So we'll start here, we'll go class. Let's go for background is maybe gray at, we're gonna go for a border, a border gray of 500. And let's go for rounded large. And of course I need some text in here. So let's say click me. And we should see our button, there we go. Next up, we need to get a little bit more spacing on this thing. So let's go padding Y of four, and that's top and bottom of padding and padding X of 10. When I'm making buttons, I like the sides to be a little bit bigger padding than the top and bottom. All right, so we have our border there. We have everything good right there. Let's add in a little bit of style. Let's go for font is thin and text is XL. All right, so we have our button there. Next up, we wanna start adding in the background. So to do that, we are going to say button right here is relative. And I'm going to add a div right here. Class is absolute. And we are going to say background is gray at 100. So we're going to do the same color as the background of our button. And we'll give this a border, border gray at 500 as well. So the thing with this is that our background is sitting on top of this big button. But what we really want for this 3D effect to take place is to wrap our text with a div right here. And the trick is to move all of those classes right here, this background, all of this to right here onto this. So that the text itself has the styling and then the background itself also has its own styling and the button, all it really does is say, hey, this is the font styles for the button. Now let me show you the trick here. We need to make sure that this is going to be left zero, right zero, top zero, bottom zero. So we're gonna say inset is zero so that we can get a height and width on it. And now you can see it overtook the other button. And if we change this to red 500, you can see that it, well, that's the border. Let's change the background to red at 100. You can see it's right there. Let's change this to 500 just to get a really nice pop so we can see what we're doing. We definitely want to round out this corner here, rounded large. There we go. And to get this rolling, we have to say bottom is negative one. So let's go bottom is one. And what that did is it pushed it up. So we're gonna say negative bottom one. So that'll push it down. And now let's change inset is X to zero because it seems like it took the whole height, but we don't want it to take the whole height. We want it to just be height is full. So there, so if I did inset zero, it would be done top zero and bottom zero. So if we do it this way, it takes the full height and then it moves itself down. So there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can do inset zero and then also say top is one, or you can say negative bottom is one. There's a couple different ways you can do that. We'll do that this way. 
with negative bottom one, and we're gonna say height is full. All right, next up, we definitely want this to sit behind the main button. So the way we can do that, since this is absolutely positioned, it took top priority, we can make this down here relative, and that will push it above the absolutely positioned item. And now we can bring back our gray background and our border. Actually, that should be background gray at 100. There we go. So now we have a button that looks 3D. And we could even play around with this. We could do negative bottom 2 and get an even bigger shadow. And the way that this works now is we can say on hover, make this entire thing depress so it looks like a 3D button. And to do that, we're going to do this text area right here. We are going to wrap this. We're going to add transition and transform. And then on hover, we're going to say translate y is 1. So we're going to move it down 1. So when I hover it, there we go. It goes down. But notice it didn't go down the full amount. If you wanted it to go down the full amount, we position this at negative bottom 2. You would have to translate this down 2 as well to make it move the entire length down like that. All right, so that's how we can do it. That's how we add our button. We can also change out the duration of this, duration 200 of the transition. So it's a little bit slower. You could even do like 1,000 on the duration. Look how slow this is. There we go. So a couple different tactics to changing out the button and the styles it has. But overall, that's how we make a button that has a 3D effect that has that cool hover effect. And you can do this on any divs. All you have to do is add this background div and make the parent div relative, and then the sibling div relative as well. And now this background shadow will go behind whatever you have. All right, I hope that was helpful. A lot of fun Tailwind CSS tactics to look at. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe down below. Thanks for watching.